Good morning. I hope everybody had a really nice vacation the last couple of weeks. I know I did. Um, and today we're getting back to school. But this week, of course, we're going to be doing school from home. Um, so just like in the spring, I'll be reading a, a new story every day. Um, so you can check back here in the morning for today's story. It's always good to start off your day with a story, I think. Um, so today we're going to read Sleep Type Farm by Eugenie Doyle. And it's a great story about what it means to put a farm to sleep for the winter. And the pictures in it are just beautiful. Sleep Type Farm, A Farm Prepares for Winter by Eugenie Doyle. There's something kind of quiet and just great about this book. I love it. Let's see if I can get my camera figured out here. All right, that's pretty good. The December days shorten and darken. We are busy putting the farm to bed. And you can see everything looks kind of wintry, right? Just like it looks outside your window right now, probably. Let's see, what am I doing here? Okay, yes. Um, with our crops mostly in, strawberries, raspberries, vegetables, honey, and hay, now is the time to prepare for deep frost, the coming wind and snow. Many hands make work light, Mom says. You can see all the different details in the picture. I love the dog. We shake straw over berry plants to blanket them from winter's frosty bite. Next April and May, they'll leaf out green and blossom white. In June, they'll give fruit so red and juicy we'll make jam and freeze berries to eat till summer comes again. We lick our lips remembering, good night strawberries covered with straw. It's a big book, so it's kind of hard to get all the details, but I'll get close there for you. Right? We cut kale and chard and broccoli we saw down tree-like Brussels sprout stems. We dig for the last carrots, beets, and potatoes to add to those stored in the barn. There, they await winter markets and our own winter meals. The fields rest brown and bare. Dad tills and plants a cover of oats and rye to protect and replenish the fields that gave us so much. Good night, fields, peaceful and still. Dad cuts back the raspberries before wind and snow can crack the canes. We cart the old brush to burn. Goodbye to last year's twigs and leaves with their bugs and spots. The promise of late summer's plump fruit lies in roots tucked underground. Good night, raspberries, resting below. Right, so in all these ways, they're kind of saying good night to all the little parts of the farm and putting everything away so that it can kind of sleep for the winter. We stack wood by the house and in the sugar house too. It will heat our home all winter and in early spring it will fuel the fire that boils maple sap into syrup. Good night, stacked wood, waiting to work. Before the winter winds come howling, we secure the hoop house's plastic sides with ropes and bales of hay. Inside, we float sheets of white cloth over the baby greens till the New Year's thaw. Safe under cover, rest little leaves with mouth-filling names. Spinach, Mizuna, Tatsoi, Arugula. Our winter salad greens will nap till stronger sun can wake them. Late last August, the hoop house grew so hot we rolled up the sides and flung open the doors while picking tomatoes, melons, and heat-loving okra. Now we button up the perfect shelter for changing weather. Good night, hoop house, wrapped up tight. Oh, I have to do this at my house because we have chickens. We board up ch chinks in the chicken coop and set a timer to give the hens light. The, the light they need to lay eggs all winter. We fluff the nests with hay, plug in the water heater, scoop fresh grain, we collect the day's eggs, fragile gifts from our friends. Good night, chickens. 
snug in your coop. Yeah, they look pretty snug in there. Oh, and there's the cat watching. With bales of hay, we build a windbreak for the beehives and place a stone on each lid to hold it firm. Right, so you can see the, the hives right there. We make the hive entrances smaller to keep roaming field mice out. Within each hive, a single queen lies in a cluster of maids working to keep her fed. In September, we harvested honey and wax, but left enough for the bees who made enough for us. Good night, bees, sheltered and safe. See, they wear those special suits, right, to keep them kind of safe from the bees. The farm stand is stocked for the holidays which, with fresh eggs, greens, and roots, onions, and garlic, garlic braids, decorative corn, honey, and maple syrup. There's plenty for us and plenty to sell. Mom and Dad move planter, cultivator, tiller, and baler into the equipment shed, a shelter from rust and cold. The tractors go in last. Good night, farm. Oh, I love this picture. The fire jumps in the wood stove. We feast on homegrown treats, vegetable soup and berry pie. We pull clinking lights from a box, untangle, tangle, to hang on the porch. Look, Mom says, the rising moon, the bright sway of stars in the sky. We light beeswax candles to soften the longest night. I bet many of your houses look like that right now with your holiday lights up. The farm is ready for down quilts of snow, the shh, shh of the wind. Dad tucks us in. Good night, farmers. Sleep tight. This is the last page. Sleep tight farm. All right, so there they are. After doing all of that, putting the farm to bed, they go to bed too. It's a lot of work. Something really quiet about this book and I just love it. All right, have a really good day. Um, I hope you get to talk to your teachers today. And remember, you can always check out the virtual library if you're looking for another story to um, listen to, right? Some are me and some are other folks. So you know how to find that. I've done it with all of you guys. It's in your Google Classroom. And there's a link to it on Canvas as well. So um, if you're looking for, uh, you know, another book to listen to, go ahead and look at the virtual library. And um, tomorrow I'll be back with another story. All right, have a good day. See you guys. Bye.